taking this sacrifice to be in the house of the Lord today. What a great, great occasion, a grand opportunity to be in the presence of the Lord with the family of God. What a thought. Can you imagine if today was the last day that we were ever going to spend on, the, on this earth? Uh, for those of us that are rapture ready and the Lord was coming this morning during the middle of this service, what if? You just never know. I tell you where I'd, I'd like to be. I'd rather be right here. I'd rather be here than laying in the bed or flipping through channels or doing anything else. I'd rather be right here in the house of the Lord, here in the Word of God, and uh, just being able to worship Him in song and testimony. And so what a great occasion to be in the house of the Lord today. We've got family, church family that are sick today. We want you to remember them in prayer that the Lord will just touch them in their bodies. It bothers me to see people going through things and having sickness. I know how that feels. Uh, it makes it difficult to be able to be in church when you're sick and you're not feeling well. Uh, am I right? It just it makes it hard. And, and uh, so we're, we're praying that the Lord will reach out and touch those that are sick this morning. Brother Gaskin said that Sister Cindy's been having trouble with her throat. Her, her, her uh, throat has been swollen up and, and uh, just difficulties there. And we want to pray that the Lord will speak the healing that she needs to her. And uh, it's good to see Sister Nora with us this morning. We've been praying fervently for her. I hate to hear it whenever she's going through it because, like I said, I know how hard that that can be. And uh, it's good to have our first-timers this morning. Well, I don't know, second-timers, third-timers, I don't know. But Brother Billy said they were Sunday-nighters, but it's good to see them on a Sunday morning or here this morning. It's the first time for everything, so praise the Lord. But, but I'm just teasing them. They've been here on Sunday morning before. But, but I tell you what, I'm glad to see you. And, and I want to say that if you've been going through sickness and you've been able to make it this morning, be thankful uh, because there's a lot of things that come up against us a lot of times on Saturdays. And I don't know, it's just like a Saturday headache devil comes on my wife. And it seems like everybody has different things the enemy brings against them. And I've learned to just pray one for another, be understanding of each and every one's infirmities because you never know. You know, you get hard against somebody else's infirmity. Be careful. You'll be the next one walking around with a headache or a limp or dragging your foot around. And uh, so we have compassion one towards another for each and every one's needs. Just been praying for each and every one of you. you got family members that are lost this morning, those that you've been praying for. We're praying fervently that God will just extend his hand to those needs. I want to be praying for the Smiths this morning. I know that they're still uh, praying along unless something's changed in the last few days that the Lord will direct them to the right church, you know, to be in. And uh, I was telling them the other day, I know Brother Smith's going to be very careful and selective. He's not just going to go to the first place uh, that may seem right or feel right or whatever. He may think is right. He's going to try to follow the perfect will of the Lord. So we want the Lord's perfect will for their life, for their family. It's an important thing to be in God's perfect will. If you're raising a family, you've got kids in church, it's extremely important because the things you experience in the place that you're at is going gonna, is gonna to depend and determine a lot of the things that your kids are going to experience as they grow up. The place that you live, the place that you, you know, that location, the place your kids go to church, it's just important for you to be in the perfect will of God. So enough can, not enough can be said about that, but do keep them in prayer. I love them and miss them as many of you do, but I know God's got a plan for each and every one of us as well. Uh, is there anybody here this morning, maybe you need prayer this morning, you know family members or someone that needs prayer? I want you to keep Sister Kathy and uh, Steve in your prayer this morning. I don't see them. I just pray that the Lord will touch them. Sister Tracy. Okay. Is she far enough along that she could deliver if she had to? Or? Okay. So let's do keep her in prayer. The Lord will uh, lay his hand on them in courtesy whole family. I want to see them just in church, staying in church.
God for his touch, though, that's for sure. Sister Jackson. I have some family members that were in there. All of us, I'm sure, probably do. Let's remember Sister Jackson's family, Sister Benefield. sister-in-law. The Lord will touch both of them. Remember my son-in-law and my daughter. And uh, God would just get a hold of their heart, touch them. Anybody else? Sister Benefield. Remember Jennifer too. Go ahead, buddy. children, her little army, you're bound to go through something every once in a while. Man, praise the Lord. Sister Myers, did you have a prayer request or something? I do want you to remember my wife. She's been, like I said, having different troubles with headaches a lot of mornings. She comes on Sunday mornings with a lot of headache and just tries to smile through it all. So I appreciate her for making the sacrifice. Some people, if they get the sniffles, they stay out of church. I'm glad my wife does the best she can to be faithful. Do keep her in your prayers as well. Keep me in your prayers. I was mentioning this couple this morning that um, a lot of times whenever I get busy doing a lot of ceiling work in here lately, I've, I've got 16,000 feet, and I'm about 7,000 feet through that 16,000 feet. And whenever I do that and I'm cutting through grid and wrapping wires and all that, I have carpal tunnel in both my wrists. As a matter of fact, right now I can't even feel my hand. And uh, it, it gets so bad at nighttime that my hands and my arms will feel like somebody poured gasoline on me and set me on fire. My hands and stuff, I can't feel them, but they'll be on fire like as far as I can't feel that. It's like numb. Have you ever been to the doctor and have dental work and you, get it, you touch it and you can't feel it? You can feel there's something pushing there, but that's the way my hands get feeling. Brother David said he knows how that feels. But uh, it's been real bad this week and a lot of other things. But i give you a praise report while uh, right in the middle of all this. Uh, yesterday, and some of you I mentioned this too already, uh, in 22 years of doing, 23 years of doing ceilings, I have never had anything like this happen. Uh, but yesterday I was working. I've been working on a higher ceiling. The ceiling's about 13 feet high. And so my scaffold is about 7 foot off the ground where I, the platform that I stand on and uh, yesterday I was working in an area where the, there's concrete missing, which is something we don't normally do, but I had the scaffold kind of over two different areas there. And I was standing on one end of the scaffold, and I felt it sink down just a little bit, and I felt something speak to me and say, step back. And so I stepped back real quickly, and I eased my way to the other side of the scaffold, and I got down, and then I realized that the pins that go in the little holes on the end of the side brace had come out, so I was just thankful, you know, and, but when I got looking at it, not only that pin on that side, but the pin on the other side, and if anybody understands how those scaffolds go to go to pe together, all it takes is one of those pins to come out, and one of the braces pops off, the board falls through, and I'd have been going to the hospital, so I don't, there's no reason why I set this scaffold up last Tuesday, and I've been working on it with over 300 pounds on it every day, all day long. And there's no reason why all of a sudden it would have fell apart a long time ago if it would have been uh, set up wrong to begin with. Whenever we set these scaffolds up, I'd push up on the braces to make sure they're locked in. So it was locked in when I set it up. So somebody purposely pulled those pins on that scaffold. I don't know if they thought they were being funny or whatever, but I'm just glad to tell you this morning that God's protecting hand is always there. 
And uh, like I told Sister Jackson this morning, God wasn't ready for that, that to happen or anything to happen to me. And so the hand of the Lord was there. To stand on a scaffold with two pins pulled out and it not fall apart like that is just amazing. I've seen these scaffolds, if one of the pins wasn't locked in before you got on it and you go to roll it, the board fell out and it just it all fell apart. So I can say this morning, praise report, thank God he is still on the throne and he's looking out for us. I was standing getting ready, I want to tell you this, I was standing getting ready this morning for church and uh, my mind went back to one night when I laid right here on the floor and the Spirit of God was all over me and I remember, some. I've shared this with some of you and these demonic looking spirits were coming down and they would go so far and they would go back up and, and that kept happening. It was like a bunch of uh, gray looking uh, figures just flying and they would come down so far and go back up and the Spirit of God spoke to me and said they could only get so close well, this morning when I was getting ready, I was thinking about what happened with that scaffold. And I was thinking, you know, I've got other problems. I've got carpal tunnel in my wrists. I have other issues that I battle with. I've been battling with my back being out for days, you know. And it's like, you know, why doesn't God just fix everything? But the, the thought came back to me. The enemy may be able to come against us with some stuff, but he can't go but so far because God said... You can't remember what he said with Job. He said, you, you can come against him in some of these ways, but you ain't going to touch his life. Amen. You touch his life, and I draw the line there. So maybe some of us are going through things for a purpose, and whatever that purpose is, to God be the glory. But in the end, God's hand is still on our life. Can you say Amen. praise the Lord? Amen. Anybody else got a prayer request this morning, Sister Nora? is keeping power. Catherine, you got a prayer request this morning? All right. Let's keep that in prayer. Anybody else? Anything before we get ready to pray? Just going to lift all these needs up to the Lord. I don't know what you want you to ever feel like a need's too small or too big. God's able to meet every single one of them. get that out of the way and then we're going to have prayer uh, this past week I guess it's uh, Jeremiah's and Savannah's birthday and uh, we want to wish them a happy belated birthday what day was it sisters it's yesterday or was it? it was Monday okay. 
Okay, so Monday was their birthday, and then uh, we had a wedding here recently that you folks weren't a part of, and we hope to have some kind of a celebration in some sort of way here soon, but uh, of Devin and Miranda being married together. And uh, we want to say we appreciate the uh, the folks that showed up for the fall festival events yesterday, and the church family and brother Dave and sister Rhonda want to give them a hand this morning, tell them we appreciate them for taking that on. Uh, there is no way I would have been able to to do any of that with all the work and stuff going on lately. So my my deepest appreciation to you and all those that showed up and were faithful to participate in that and be a part of that. I think that Sister Reba won a whole jar full of chiclets or whatever you call it, sixlets or whatever. I told them with all that juicing and stuff that they do, maybe they could throw them sixlets in there with broccoli and they could have some chocolate broccoli in their juicer. So anyway, but uh, we got some upcoming events that are coming up on the 23rd of November. I'd like for you to make sure you make note of this. Write it down for you ladies to help your husband remember the things that they never remember. November the 23rd at 6.30, we're going to be having a Thanksgiving dinner. I want to invite you to that, invite your friends and family. I'm not sure if uh, folks are bringing stuff, if there's a sign-up sheet, but I'm sure that my wife will be able to direct you in that part of things. I try to take care of the, the preaching part of things and let everybody else work out all the, iron out all the other details. Uh, November 27th, I want you to please make note of this. Uh, there'll be no, thir- no service on the Thanksgiving uh, night. Uh, that day, so please do make a note of that because if you show up, you're more than welcome to have church by yourself in the parking lot. But I, but we won't be here. So if that's so, if you decide to do that, that'll be all fine and grand, and that that's all right with me. So if you will stand, we're going to get ready to pray over all the prayer requests and the different needs this morning. Now, I want us to take these needs very serious and humbly. This morning, there's a lot of folks that are lost. That, uh, that need a Savior, a lot of people that are sick in need of healing. There's some this morning that have made their requests known that are battling with stuff even right now that need a healing in their body, even this morning. And so we want to make, uh, we want to make a mention of that to the Lord and just pray and believe Him. So will you lift your hands this morning? Let's all go before the Lord in prayer this morning. Father, this morning, we love you for all that you've been and all that you've done for your, your people, the church. We pray this morning, God, that you'll minister to the needs, Lord, that are here, that are obvious today. Lord, for those, Lord, that are battling with sickness right now, even this very moment, that are in pain, that are battling with things that they don't even know what to do, but to just keep trying each and every day to get up and go about their day and do everything they know they can do. I pray, Lord, for healing in their bodies. Lord, for those that are on their way to the hospital this morning, Lord, with labor pains or whatever that it may be, I pray, God, that you'll send healing. Lord, that you'll let everything go smoothly and perfectly the way that you will ordain it. We pray this morning, God, for those struggling with financial troubles, Lord, battling with things that they don't know what to do, God, don't know where the money's gonna come from. I pray, Lord, that you'll open up the heavens above, Lord, as they are faithful to you and to your church, to your house. I pray, God, that you'll be faithful in return. Lord, let the windows of heaven be opened up. Bless their household abundantly, Lord. Provide for their every need, we pray. And I pray this morning, God, for those that are here that are battling with spiritual, emotional problems, God. I pray for their spiritual healing, Lord, that you'll restore them, Lord. If they've been going through a deep, dark valley, I pray, God, send deliverance, Lord. Bring them out of that place, God. We pray through the precious name of Jesus, Lord, that you'll al- you'll allow and let the anointing of the Holy Ghost be in this place. Lord, upon every song that we sing, every testimony given, the word of God preached this morning, Lord, I pray let the anointing be in this house. Lord, let there be conviction in this place. Lord, draw those that need a touch to the altar, God, today. We'll give you praise for everything you do. Let the anointing be upon the instruments that be played and the voices that may sing. We'll give you glory and honor for it all in the precious name of Jesus. And everybody can say amen. Amen. Where's Savannah? Where's Savannah and Jeremiah this morning? Where are they at this morning? Amen. There's Jeremiah. Let's all sing happy birthday to him, all right? We're going to sing it Brother Meyer style because I don't know how to do it the other way too well. You ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Give my hand this morning. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet if you're able. Let's get ready to worship the Lord this morning. Phone this MIA. Who took it? Hallelujah. Come on, Sister Tracy, bring it. Lift your hands this morning, close your eyes and get your mind on the Lord. Put all your cares behind you.
righteousness. I stand complete in Him and worship Him. He is all my righteousness. I stand complete in Him and worship Him. He is all my righteousness. I stand complete in Him and worship Christ our Lord. Let us worship Him, Christ our Lord.
nothing can hold me here. Um, I can barely sing this morning. I don't know what's going on with my throat, but I know nothing's going to hold me here. There's going to be a day when the Lord comes back and gets me. I know I try to be faithful every day, and some people may say, well, what if you don't make it? Well, I'm doing everything I can, and one day God's going to come home and get this child, and he's going to say, well done, because I'm doing everything that I can to seek the Lord and to do right by him. And I'm ready to see him. I'm ready to go home. I'm ready. This heart is ready to go home this morning. So let's sing that song this morning. Nothing can hold me here. D. 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 As some in David. Some seek for wealth down here. Some seek for fame. I look for Jesus with him I'll reign. Well, I'm, I'm just, just a pilgrim here. Soon I'll be gone. Nothing, Nothing can, can hold me here. I'm headed, I'm headed home. home. Oh, Nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. And heavenly gates are near. And it won't be long until I walk in on streets of gold. Singing around God's throne. Nothing, Nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. If I should die down here before that trumpet sounds. When they lay my body in that cold, cold ground Well, you don't have to cry for me Don't sing no sad song Cause nothing can hold me here I'm headed home Oh, nothing can hold me here I'm headed home Heavenly gates are near And it won't be long Until I'm walking on the streets of gold And I'll be singing around God's throne Nothing can hold me well, I'm headed home. My soul's been saved. And I am sanctified. I'm Holy Ghost filled. And I'm fire baptized. I'm glad God still got a people. And we are not alone. Nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Come on, that's right. Oh, nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Heavenly gates are near and it won't be long until I'm walking. Singing around God's throne, nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Some seek for wealth down here, some seek for faith. But I'm, I'm looking for Jesus, Jesus and with him I'm, I'm going to reign. Cause I'm just a pilgrim here and soon I'll, I'll be gone. gone. But nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Well, oh, nothing, nothing can hold me here. I'm home. Home. And it won't be long until we're walking, walking on streets of gold and we'll be singing around, around God's, God's throne. Nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. My soul's been, been saved, saved and, and I, I am sanctified. God, Come on, that's right. Holy Ghost feel I'm fire baptized. My God still got a people, and I am not alone. Nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Nothing can hold me here. I am headed home. Well, heavenly gates are near. Until I'll be walking on streets of gold and I'll be singing. Singing around God's throne, nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home, well, nothing Come on, can that's hold right. me here. I'm headed home and heavenly gates are near and it won't be long until I'm walking on streets of gold. Singing around God's throne, nothing can hold me Well, my soul's been saved. I am sanctified, devil. I'm Holy Ghost filled. Come on. And I'm fire baptized. My God still got a people. And I am not alone. Nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Heavenly gates are near and it won't be long until I'm walking on streets of gold. Singing around God's throne, nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Well, some seek for wealth down here.
some seek for fame. What are you seeking for this morning? Jesus. Come on. With him I'll reign. Well, I'm just. Well, oh, nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Oh, well, nothing, nothing can hold me here. I am headed home. My soul's been saved and I am sanctified. I am Holy Ghost filled and I'm fire baptized. My God's still got a Come on, church. And I am not alone. Nothing can hold me here. Come on, you might as well lift your hands and give God praise this morning. Don't let the devil come by and rob you of a chance to get in the presence of the Lord. Come on, worship the Lord. My soul's been saved and I am sanctified. I am Holy Ghost filled and I'm still fire baptized. Our God still got a people and we are not alone. Nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Well, nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Still got a people 
I'm going to lift your hands across the house and begin to praise the Lord from your heart because you mean it, because he's been so good to you. Come on, give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, that victory's going to be mine this morning in the name of Jesus. Come on, claim that victory for yourself this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you the praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, we magnify you in the house of the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we magnify you this morning. Jesus, we praise you today. Hallelujah. Come on, church, keep worshiping the Lord. It's all right to give him praise. He deserves it. You might as well get used to it. Going to do a whole lot of that if you're going to go to heaven. Going to be a lot of praise in his name in heaven. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you and praise you this morning. Lift up your name above all names. In Jesus' name, we praise you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Victory. Victory shall be mine. Victory, victory shall be mine. If I hold my peace and let God fight my battles, victory, victory shall be mine. Well, victory, victory shall be mine. Come on, help me sing it. Victory, victory shall be mine If I hold my peace I let God fight my battles Victory, victory shall be mine If I pray right It shall be mine Come on, put your hands together If I pray right it shall be mine if I hold my peace. I let God find my battles. Victory, victory shall be mine. Well, if I live right, it shall be mine. Come on. Well, if I live right, it shall be mine. And if I hold my peace, I'll let God fight my battles. Victory, victory shall be mine. And if I love right, it shall be mine. Come on, that's right. And if I love right, it shall be mine. And if I hold my peace, I let God fight my battles. Victory, victory shall be mine. If we're together right, it shall be mine. If we're together right, it shall be mine. And if we let God, come on. Oh, God will fight our battles and victory, victory shall be mine. We just throw both hands up and thank the Lord for the victory that he's given you this morning. Come on, you can do better than that, church. Give God the praise. Hallelujah, people get more excited about somebody making a touchdown than some folks do about praising the Lord. Come on, you ought to give God the praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we glorify you and praise you. Hallelujah, we glorify you, we praise you. Thank you, Jesus. 
Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. Liberty for you to just lift your hands and praise the Lord however you feel. If you want to lay on the floor and praise the Lord, walk around, praise the Lord. Sit and cry and praise the Lord. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Hallelujah. Just worship him this morning. He's been better to you and me than we could ever thank him enough and praise him enough. I want to ask you a question this morning. Why did you come to the house of the Lord? What brought you here today? What is it that you seek this morning? I can remember whenever they ran to the tomb where Jesus was to see where he was laid. The stone was rolled away. They were looking coming to the grave thinking they're going to find the place where the Lord was dead. But instead, they came and they found something totally different. You see, this morning, you might have come for a lot of reasons, but you may discover something that you didn't come for. He's alive. Yes, amen. And he's still real. You know what I like about the Lord probably as much if not more than most anything? That he's a God that I can feel. Yes, amen. I feel him down in my spirit Hallelujah. this morning. Yes, amen. Feel him in my soul. I wouldn't trade that for anything in this world. All the cars, the money, the fame or the fortune, the wealth, any of that. I'm just thankful. Can we give God one more lift of praise? Just lift him up right now. Jesus, we praise you. We thank you, Jesus. We glorify you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's been good, good, good. Amen. He's been good. If you feel the presence of the Lord, won't you shout praise the Lord this morning? Come on. Come on. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The name of the Never Lord. take the Spirit of God for granted. While the Lord is passing by, if you feel the Lord tugging at your heart, the best thing to do is surrender. Submit to the will of God. Allow the Lord to do in you what He desires to do this morning. He's a God touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Amen. He knows how we hurt, He knows how we feel, He knows how we struggle. He knows what's going on this morning. He knows how to strengthen and bless and help you this morning. Amen. We're going to come to you this morning by the will of God to receive the morning offering and tithes today. Just want you to keep your mind on the Lord today. This is just as much a part as a beautiful opportunity to worship the Lord in our giving as it is to lift up our hands and worship Him in praise. Amen. I've heard over the last couple of years that there are different varying opinions in, in church, the, the church realm, I guess you'd say, on offerings and tithes and free will offerings and that kind of thing. And uh, regardless of what you believe or how you believe it, the church has to exist on the giving of the saints of God. So we're going to ask you to be faithful this morning to make that possible. Uh, we always have bills and things that we have reoccurring every month. And believe it or not, it's so tight that it makes it difficult. And we're always having to find means and methods and fundraisers just to keep bills paid. Somehow God has allowed us to continue to go on. And I'm going to trust the Lord this morning that he's going to use you to help us to be able to keep going. I've had many people over the last couple of years ask me, I can't tell you how many times in times of need that I've had somebody from the church or even on the outside say to me, well, Brother Myers, is there anything that the church of God could do to help us? I've heard it many times. And usually I have to reply and tell people, well, the same way that the church here is locally, the church, the state office has also gone through its troubles and financial issues as well. They've had their own personal struggles. And they've had to cut back so much until that it's hard sometimes to get a hold of people. A lot of positions they had to let go and things as well. Because not only were we affected, but they were affected through the financial crisis that we've been through. 
But I want to tell you this, this last week, we had a great need. I didn't know how in the world we were going to meet it. This is, this is just to tell you that things are always tight and how tight that they can be. We had a real need. And if our insurance didn't get paid, we were going to wind up being in default on our insurance of the church. We currently pay somewhere around 800 and something dollars or somewhere around that neighborhood. I don't know the exact figure, but it's something close to that. And I talked to the agent, and she told me that if the insurance went into default, that it would become as much possibly as double what we were paying now. Well, if you can't afford hardly what you're paying now, how in the world are you going to afford $1,600 a month just for insurance for your church? And so I'm just going to tell you this morning as a pastor, when I was in South Carolina trying to trying to do a marriage ceremony with all kinds of other things, you can only imagine the stress and the mountain on my shoulders of not knowing what to do and how to make it happen. I try not to ever push things on our church, but I tell you, it sometimes can be a heavy, hard load. And it got all the way down to the very last minute. I told some of you we have a church or a, we have a nonprofit group that is looking to rent our facilities, and they were going to be paying six months in advance. And uh, so we were looking for that, and so I've waited all month long thinking, you know, if I can just get them to come through, and they're supposed to come through before the end of this month, then I'll use that money to pay the insurance. Well, Friday came, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. I had to have the payment paid before the end of the day Friday. And I found out mid-afternoon that they weren't going to be able to come through with the payment until after the beginning of the month. So my wife and I are thinking to ourselves, what are we going to do? You know, because how are you going to continue to pastor a church if you can't make your bills? So it was pretty tough. It's pretty hard. So I got on the phone. I called the state office. I talked to the state overseer, not somebody else. I talked to the very head man, and I said, listen, we've been here for seven years faithful. I don't ever ask nobody for nothing. We've been doing everything we can. We've had fundraisers. When I took this church, it was $26,000 in unpaid bills. Somehow God has allowed us to make it this far. Is there anything you guys can do? He said, be honest with you, Brother Myers. We don't have it. He said, but I'm going to do this. He said, I'm going to donate $1,000. I'm not going to loan it to you. We're just going to give it to you to help put towards that payment. We were riding on, on just minutes to get all of this done. And so within a matter of just a little bit of time, I was able to get in touch with the insurance company. The insurance agent that we go through happens to be our state evangelism team's wife. She used to work in the state office. She understands our situation. She knew how things were when we came here. I said, Sister Wilma, I don't know what to do. I said, we're working as hard as we can we got to come up with another $1,300 on top to be able to get all of this taken care of. And so she said, Brother Meyer, she said, here's what we'll do. She said, we'll go ahead and put in the other money. And she said, we'll make the payment. And she said, just when the other payment comes through from the other people, you send us the money. She said, no other insurance company would do this. And she said, I know y'all's situation. We love y'all, and I appreciate you and Sister Christy and the hard work you've put in there. And so we're going to do this. I've been under a heavy, heavy, heavy load. And I want to tell you something. God's still good. Yes. God is still good. So when we take up these offerings like this, Please don't ever think we're not like some of these television stations. We're not flying fancy private jets. I work every week. I try to do the best I can to put food on my own family's table. So when you give in this church, you don't have to worry about or wonder whether or not we're doing what we can. Whatever you give, it goes straight to bills, straight to making sure that you can come back next Sunday and worship the Lord and maybe bring some lost folks with you. I love you folks this morning. I hope you know that. Stand to your feet this morning as we get ready to give unto the Lord. If you're here this morning, you have tithes, we encourage you to do that, pay that. You have offering. Whether you believe in tithes or offering, hopefully you'll make up for it in your offering. And just give as given unto the Lord this morning.
Bow your heads with me, if you will. And uh, I'm going to ask Brother David, is he in here? Your brother David, will you say the blessing of the offering this morning? Sister Jackson, you want to play something for us? And when, she, when you're done with this, bring your offering up front. Everyone that will, just bring it right up front this morning. And when we're done, then we will have the children do their We've mission march. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages. We will not be defeated. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages. We will not be defeated. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, praise God. It's good to have uh, Devin and Miranda Myers with us this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, we're going to have them come around and, and sing. Sister Tracy, you want to come up here and stand with her and help her sing? That'll make her feel a whole lot better. Come on, sis. Come on. You just stand there and do like the new kids on the block and lip sync. Come on like Millie Vanilli or something and just lip sync. <laughs> Amen. Somebody here that's got some victory in your heart this morning, you want to stand and testify for the Lord? Give the Lord praise. Anybody glad to be saved? You just want to give God the praise this morning? Somebody else want to give the Lord praise? God's been good to you and you just want to give him glory this morning for what he's done. stand if you will this morning get ready to worship the Lord
gonna wear a crown. Just as soon as my feet strike tired, gonna lay down my heavy burden. Gonna shout and tell the glad story. We shall wear a robe and crown. Gonna wear a crown. Wear a crown. When the trumpet sound. When the trumpet sound. Gonna wear a crown. Just as soon as my feet strike tired. Lay down my heavy burden. Gonna put on my robe in glory. Shout and tell the glad story. We shall wear a robe and Wear a crown, gonna wear a crown when the trumpet sounds. When the trumpet sounds, I'm gonna wear a crown just as soon as my feet strike tired. I'm gonna lay down my heavy burden, put on my robe in glory, and I'll shout and tell the glad story. We shall wear a robe and crown.
Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Come on, sing it from your heart. Praise God. Oh, yes, Lord. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh, yes, Lord. the Lord praise this morning. We can all be thankful for the Lord's grace, can't we? God for his grace. I feel in my spirit this morning there's a few heavy hearts here. I'm praying this t- today that before you leave, the Lord will give you the peace and strength that you need. We're going to be turning our Bibles this morning to 2 Kings chapter number 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. Second Kings chapter number 4, verses 1 through verse number 7. When you find it, if you will, stand to your feet for the reading of God's Word. say I thank you dearly from the bottom of my heart for your service to the Lord and being here today in the house of God to hear the word and sing praises to the Lord's name. Chapter number four, the book of 2 Kings. I'm going to be reading verses one through verse number seven. I desire your prayers this morning that the Lord will just use me according to his perfect will. Many times we may not understand this, but a lot of of times whenever the word is being preached, there's a lot riding on what is going to be said. And uh, that's a great responsibility. Verse number one, 2 Kings chapter four says this. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. Thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me. What hast thou in the house? She said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. We have to understand when we read this particular portion, I want to I bring something out to you. She may have had a broom standing in the corner. She could have had a coffee table, end table, a bed to sleep on. But the emphasis that Elisha was putting, and she understood that because she was talking about a debt that she owed, was do you have anything valuable? Is there anything in your house worth something? That was really the question. So Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow, not 
of you. Thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon me. Upon thy sons, thou shalt pour out into all those vessels. Thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her, upon her sons who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out came to pass when the vessels were full she said unto her son bring me yet a vessel he said unto her there is not a vessel more and the oil stayed I like to preach with the Lord's help this morning on all God needs is a vessel stretch your hand to the Lord this morning pray for the will of the Father Lord, this morning we love you, God, with a fervent love. We can never love you the way that you have loved us for all that you've done for us, the great promises from your word, biblical, spoken. You've done great things we can never thank you enough for. But this morning we come before the throne of heaven and we ask you to smile upon this service. God, allow your spirit to fill this room. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost be heavy upon the words that I speak today. Give them power and life. Loose those that may be bound. Give freedom to those that are captive. Save those that are lost. Strengthen those that are down. And we'll give you praise for everything that you do in your house this morning. In Jesus' name, everyone can say amen. God's help this morning, I'd like to preach on all God needs is a vessel. We often turn to Webster to see what he's got to say, to define certain words or things, to have better understanding and clarity. So again, this morning we turn to see what he has to say about a vessel. According to the Bible or the dictionary, Webster's dictionary says it can be a container cup, a bowl, or kettle, something used to hold something. It also says it's a person in whom some quality as grace is infused. When I look to the Bible to better understand what God's word says about vessels, I can only understand so much by seeing what Webster, dictionary.com, or whatever has to say. But the final authority is God's word, in my opinion. But when we look at the Bible to see the references that God makes about vessels to understand what he is saying here. In 2 Chronicles chapter number five and verse number five, it shows us the use of holy vessels. Where the Bible said there, now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Arise therefore. Build you the sanctuary of the Lord God to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessels of God into the house that he has built to the name of the Lord. Then we read in Exodus chapter 40, verse number nine. We see here the anointing of the holy vessels. The Bible said, thou shalt take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is therein and thou shalt hollow it and all the vessels thereof and it shall be Holy. The book of Joshua shows us consecrated vessels. The book of Jeremiah, we see the clay in the hand of the potter. It is referred to as being marred, a marred vessel. The Bible said there, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel. It seemed good to the potter to make it. The vessel of clay that he was speaking of here represented none other than God's people. In the New Testament, we see where Paul referred to or was referred to as a chosen vessel. In Acts chapter nine, verse 15, the Bible said, but the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. 
Paul's letter to Timothy encourages the Christian to be a useful vessel. For he says in Timothy 2 and 21, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Who can forget the five wives and the five foolish virgins in Matthew chapter 25 and verse four? But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. And then we read in verse number seven of Second Chronicles chapter four, how that God begins to show us God's New Testament plan and that we are the vessels that he desires to fill. For the Bible said we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. You see, that treasure is none other than the Spirit of God in earthen vessels. You look at yourself in the mirror this morning, you pinch yourself, you realize this flesh that you're clothed with, this tabernacle, it is an earthen vessel. The Spirit of God that infills you is the treasure that the Word of God was speaking of. You see, when we look at our scripture text here in the Bible, 2 Kings, we understand that in the account of a widow woman whose husband was apparently a faithful man of God, now this poor widow woman has no husband. Her source of income has depleted to almost nothing. And now the creditor comes to her to threaten, to take away the only thing she has that really means something to her, her two sons. And the only valuable thing that she has left in her house it was not the bed, it was not the, the wood floors, it was not the paintings on the wall or any other thing, but the only valuable thing she has left in the house is a pot of oil. So that widow woman takes her story to the man of God, Elisha. In other words, I don't know what I'm going to do. I want you to know this morning when you come to the end of life's road, or maybe you're in a place where that you seem you don't know which way way to go. Everything's falling apart and the only way to do or the only way to go is to look up and to go up. I want you to know that sometimes God allows your circumstance. Sometimes God allows your mess to get so bad that you have no choice but to look up to God. And come on somebody, anybody a testimony that you had to get down to rock bottom before that you ever were willing to reach up. People couldn't snap you out of your hole. They couldn't push you out of your hole. You had to get to the place that you were so low that you were tired of being there and you had to trust God that he would be willing to bring you out of your mess. Is anybody else a living testimony of what the power of God's able to do when you finally make up your mind to come out of your mess? Come on, saints of God. Come on, that's right. But she takes her story to the man of God, Elisha. He tells her to shut the door and to start and to pour. But you see, before he tells her to do that, he said, I want you to go and I want you to go to the neighbors and borrow, amen, vessels. Don't just borrow a few, but borrow all the vessels that you can get and bring them back to the house. Amen, so she does exactly as the man of God tells her. She shuts the door and starts to pour. He tells her to fill them and then put them aside and then fill another. I want you to get a mental picture in your mind this morning of what is taking place in this woman's house. She's got vessels in the house. Amen, that she's gone out, her sons have borrowed from the neighbors. Amen, I just, I imagine Brother Billy, the living room floor is slapped full of vessels all shapes, all sizes, all colors, uh, all different forms and fashions of vessels. Uh, it didn't matter what they looked like. Uh, it didn't matter how old they were. It didn't matter where they came from. Uh, it didn't matter how tall, how short, uh, how thin, how big, how bulky. It didn't matter. He said, just get out there and give me some vessels uh, that I got something that I can feel. Can somebody say, help us, God? But the room is full of vessels, Sister Tracy. 
and Elisha had already told her when you get those vessels in there, he said, I want you to take that pot of oil and I want you to begin to pour into every single vessel. When you pour into a vessel and it becomes full, take it, set it aside and start on the next one. You hear me? Amen. When a vessel gets full, take it, set it aside, fill another vessel. And so for who knows how long, I don't know if it took them 30 minutes. I don't know if it took half the day, but vessel after vessel after vessel, they did the same thing. They took another vessel, they filled it, they set it aside. They took another vessel, filled it, and set it aside. I want you to know what I love about this is what it says in verse number six and it came to pass when all the vessels were full that she said unto her son bring me yet another vessel and he said unto her there's not a vessel more and the oil stayed. Y'all ready for some preaching this morning with the help of the Lord? I want you to know something today, church. There's a New Testament connection with the fact that there was a debt that had to be paid and Elisha would use empty vessels to extinguish that debt. You see, most all of us understand this morning that Adam and Eve had fell in the Garden of Eden. There was an outstanding debt because of their fall. You and I understood that. You understood the fact that the Lord had a plan for thousands of years in place, thousands of years in the making, that he would come up with some form of way to redeem mankind back to himself. You see, the same way that the most valuable thing that that widow had in her house was a pot of oil, the most valuable thing that heaven had to offer was the Son of God. You hear what I'm saying? He said, what have you got in the house? Amen, I can hear the Father in heaven said, amen, the best thing I got, the best thing, the most valuable thing heaven could offer is the Son of God. He is a representation of that widow woman's little pot pot of oil. Can you say thank God for that pot of oil? (laughs) But I want you to understand the same way that Elisha just needed empty vessels to multiply the value of that one pot. The Father in heaven only needs empty vessels to feel that he can replicate the spirit of Christ. Amen. In this sin cursed world You hear me, somebody? The Father in heaven is seeking for empty vessels. He's just looking for another empty vessels. Sister Tracy said this morning, I know that I am saved. I thank God that I am sanctified. I thank God that I am filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen, there are some today that they would say, Brother Myers, I thank God that I am a a vessel and uh, God has filled me. Can I tell you this morning, uh, thank God for you and the Lord loves you, but I'll tell you what he's really concerned with. Uh, I'll tell you what he really wants more than anything is a little bit more, a few more empty vessels uh, that he can pour his power, his spirit and his anointing into. As I knelt down and prayed this morning, I got some preaching to do, but as I knelt down and I prayed this morning, I got to thinking to myself, you know, if you take an experienced carpenter, somebody that knows how to build, you give him a pile of wood and he'll take a pile of wood and turn it into a masterpiece. You hear me? Amen. I don't claim to be very good or the best but that pulpit right there started out 
with a load of lumber on the back of my pickup truck that I got from the uh, big dock store and brought it home and one piece went to another piece to another piece and before it was all over with, you have that thing sitting there in front of you. Hey man, I got to thinking this morning, Sister Barbara, about how that so ever many years ago this beautiful piano was donated to the church inside of it's a little plaque in memory of the Lord, the, the, the young lady that lost her life to a drunk driving accident. But that piano right there is a beautiful thing. And you get somebody that knows how to play it. Hey Amen. They can blow your mind how good that thing can sell. But if you brought that piano in a bucket of bolts and nuts and strings and wood before it was ever molded or shaped, stained, finished, varnished, wheels put on it, pedals put on it, keys put on it, and you put it in a big pile in the middle of the floor, you'd probably say, what do you want me to do with that? but in the hands of the right person they can take that and make beautiful music they can take that and make something beautiful out of it and I tell you this morning you feel like you've gone too far you feel like your life's too much of a mess and I tell you God is a master piano builder God is a master builder and everything he does he can take your bowl of mess he can take your pile of stacked up mess and make something beautiful if you just let God. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. Somebody say, God, help us this morning. Hold oh, that little bullshit. Hallelujah. Amen. All God needs is a vessel. Somebody say that this morning. All God needs is a vessel. Amen. I want us to see a few vital things from this beautiful story. The vessels that she was commanded to go retrieve had to be empty. They couldn't be filled with anything else. And I tell you this morning, the reason why that you may live your life miserable, cantankerous, the reason why you can't find joy and hope and peace is because your life is filled with junk. You hear me, somebody? But if that vessel can become empty, you hear me, somebody? The man of God, Elisha, said, Brother Billy, go out there and borrow some vessels, empty vessels, and borrow not a few. And so, if that vessel was already empty, fantastic. But if the neighbor had a pot and it had a bunch of stuff in it, maybe it had some flour, maybe it had some spices, maybe it had some water in it, guess what had to be done before they could bring that vessel and they could use it had to be emptied out and I tell you this morning uh, what the Lord look, is looking for is an empty vessel you might be full of sin uh, you might be full of pride uh, you might be full of anguish uh, you might be full of bitterness uh, you might be full of sin uh, and it's carnal nature hey man don't you worry about that there's a remedy in the blood uh, I said there's a remedy in the blood and my God's able to bring you back uh, my God's able to bring you to the foe of the sheep and save your soul. Woo! I want you to know this. Amen. Before God's ever going to do anything in your life, you must be emptied out before the oil of his will, his purpose, his salvation, his deliverance can be poured in. He's going to have to pour that junk out. Don't mind if I preach slow this morning. I just feel like plowing right here. I feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I read in one portion of the Bible, the Old Testament. I wish I could place it right now. I can't, but I'll tell you what the story, what happened. There were two spies on the outside of a city and they were trying to figure out how to get in the city. Are you listening? So they walked all around that city trying to figure out how are we going to get in? Anybody remember the walls of Jericho? And you remember they were thick and wide and tall. 
Well, in Bible days, they used walls to keep the enemy out. They didn't have airplanes. You couldn't fly a bomber over somebody's city. You couldn't fly over the walls unless somebody shot you over there some strange way. And so those walls had to be overcome before they could get inside the city. Many times, the city, how strong the city was known to be was however tall, however wide, or however thick that its walls were. But on this day, two spies are walking round and round about the city. And all of a sudden, they run into a man who lives inside of that city. Come here, Brother Billy. When they get a hold of that man, they ask him, Sir, we're trying to get in this city, you see. And all we want to do is get into this city, okay? Can you show us a breach in the wall or can you show us how to get in there? We'll promise not to bother you. We won't harm you. We just want to get into that city. And you know what happened? That man looked at the two spies and he began to tell them how to get into that city. He began to show them where the breach was, where the opening was in the wall. You see, the premise behind it was and how it applies to you and me. I want you to understand that God wants to get on the inside of the city of your soul. He don't want to harm you. It ain't you that he's after. It's what's inside of you that he's after. He said, if you'll just show me, a, if you'll give me an open door, you hear me? I said, if you'll just give me an open door, I'll get inside of there. I'll rearrange that city and I'll never bring you no harm. But you gotta give me an open door. You gotta let me in. And I tell you this morning, God wants to do the same thing in our life. If we'll just give God an open door, God will change, rearrange, and fix that inside the city. Can you say amen? All he needs is an empty vessel. All he's looking for is a vessel. I wonder this morning, are you the vessel that God came for today? Are you the one that God cares so much about that he would bankrupt all of heaven if he had to? Are you the one that would take heaven's best and use that at the command of the prophet of God, figuratively speaking, and allow that to be poured out. Do you know that whenever the Son of God was hung on the cross, his blood poured out? Somebody said it spilled. You say whatever you want to, and it, I won't offend me at all but I don't believe his blood spilled. Spills are something that happens accidentally. When the blood of Jesus Christ came out of his body, it came out because it was purposely done that way. But when that blood was poured out, honey, your redemption was paid in full. One vessel at a time. My God, I'm telling you this morning, that one soul at a time. God said, give me some vessels, and I'll start filling up. Amen, I'll fill one, put it to the side, fill another. Put it to the side, feel another. You know, we get excited if we sing right. We get excited if we, if we have a fundraiser go down right. I'll tell you the greatest thing that ever happened is when a soul gets filled. You hear me? It's when a soul gets filled. My God. The fact that this woman had to go to her neighbors. I'm gonna preach this out if it's all right. The fact she had to go to her neighbors shows me two things. First of all, that she had to humble herself and ask for help. I can remember being a young man and being so in full of myself, my own pride. I've always been the type of person I'm going to figure it out. I don't want your help. Don't bother me. If I get it, I'll get it because I got it by myself. I don't want to borrow no money. I'll be stubborn and figure it out all by myself. Amen. Has anybody else ever been like that? 
But then you get to the place where you can't, you ain't got no choice. You may have to call the state office. You may have to call mama anyway, and you're picking up the phone. Oh, God, I hate to do this. I'm going to have to listen to an hour and a half lecture about where I spent my money for the last two years. You're going to have to humble yourself. You can't never be so womanly, manly, tough, bad to the bone. You can't never be so full of yourself that God can't humble you if you'll let him. She had to humble herself, Sister Tracy. She didn't matter no more. She had to go to the neighbors and say, I need help. And the two boys had to say, I need some help. Not only did she have to ask for help, but let me tell you this. You're listening? She had to actually do something. We're living in one of the craziest generations I think I have ever seen. People want God to do it and just snap his fingers and bam, shazam, it's over. Well, God, I want you to send me $500 to pay that car payment. God says, okay. God says, okay, this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to go ask so-and-so if you can borrow the money. Oh, Lord, no. She had to do something. I've seen people sit in a church service, and it's almost like if I get saved, God's going to send a lightning bolt down, and he's, gonna, he's just going to do it. He's just going to, he's going to, you know, wiggle his nose or shake his foot or something's going to happen, and I'm going to get it. Let me tell you something. That's the reason why that even though we may not see altar calls in the New Testament the way we do them in the church, I still believe in a good old-fashioned altar call because what it does, it tells a man or a woman, you gotta make a choice. You gotta get up out of your seat. You gotta get up from where you're at and you gotta go to the altar and meet him there and get what it is God has for you. Is anybody else with me this morning? sometimes honey you gotta do something you're gonna have to be the one to make a choice I'm gonna tell you something in my life my time of serving God I might can maybe I don't know I, may, I hope I don't say something wrong Lord but I could probably count on two hands how many times I've gone to somebody and tried to get them to come to the altar go back and brother Come on to the altar. Don't you want to go to the altar? Come on to the altar. Come on, brother. Come on. I told you there's probably on two hands I can count the times that I have because I still believe that God can use that. But I learned a long time ago, you listening? If the conviction of the Holy Ghost will not move you, I sure can't do it. Did you hear me? I don't care if I get a life-size crowbar and put it underneath your spiritual backside. It ain't gonna do a lick of good. And all I can do is keep praying because I tell you the greatest salvation is whenever conviction gets so heavy, when conviction gets so thick, you can't sit there. You say, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. And I tell you, I was in a revival one night and I was preaching a lady possessed with a devil. I'll never forget it by the grace of God sitting right about over here. And I was preaching about the realities of hell. Amen. I got to the end of the message and I remember saying something along the lines. I said, if you could only have a glimpse into hell fire this, the, tonight. I said, and if you knew we could roll back the carpet, pull back the lid and look into hell. I said, you wouldn't just sit there and a conviction. I said, you'd get up and you'd run to this altar. I watched that lady. She was sitting in between two people right, right about here and she was sitting there and just looked shaken. And about the time I said that, Brother Billy, she stood up. She almost flipped over the pew. She was bumping into people trying to get and she was stumbling all the way down to the altar as fast as she could. And I tell you, whatever happened to good old conviction, whatever happened to you get to the place that you said this empty vessel's gonna get full, I'm not a 
expecting Pastor Myers to preach it into me, put it into me. I'm gonna get it for myself. I wanna tell you folks something. She had to make a move. I preached not too many months or years ago right here in this church. And I'm gonna tell you the same thing this morning. It's your turn now. You listening? It's your turn now. If my wife is good enough to stand four or five hours in the kitchen making me a great meal, hot biscuits and butter melting off the side, steam rolling up, big old pot of collard greens, some fluffy white rice, a little bit of butter on the top of that, pork chops with a little crispy pieces on the sides of it, You can see the seasoning sitting right on the top of the meat. You listening to me? I got your attention. If she's good enough to prepare that, I wanted to paint a picture and I'm going to show you why here in a minute. If she's good enough to do all of that for me, whenever she says, Honey, supper's ready. She did her part. She even went as far as to tell me what my nose already told me. Supper's ready. Huh? It's my turn now. I I am the type of person when I get busy and I'm working, I don't like to stop for nothing. If I'm in the middle of working under a car, I don't want to stop until I'm done with what I'm doing, then I'll go. And I'll have my wife standing over my shoulder baby I love you but the food's going to get cold if you don't come on you know because she worked hard she don't want me to get in there and taste it when it's cold she wants me to get the best of the best that's when it like the other day I got up on a I got up on a morning and she had made some pumpkin bread with big chunks of Hershey chocolate or something in it I'm not much of a pumpkin person but I like to pumpkin myself to death I ate that and oh it just made my taste buds go into overload but she can make it and put it in that little cake thing with the lid on the top but it's my turn whenever it comes to eating it amen I see people come to church and God's already spread the table his grace is better than pork chops with crispy pieces on the side and seasoning all around it's better than grandma's homemade biscuits with a light dose of butter fluffy rolls up it's better than all of that but many times we sit in the house of God and the spirit of God's moving and we push it off like it ain't nothing it's your turn now God says I have done so much I have blessed you coming and going. I've tried to use things to get your attention. I've tried to wake you up. I've tried to show you what you're missing out on. I've tried to show you, and I tried to show you. All you gotta do on this Sunday morning is give me one empty vessel and watch what I can do. God can take a pile of wood, metal, keys, and strings and make an instrument that he can make beautiful music out of your life. Can somebody say, God, help me this morning. Amen, I want you to see this. The fact that she said, he, he said, set it aside. That which is full tells me that the attention and the focus is directed to the filling of the empty. Watch this. The man of God says, you've got all those vessels and you take that pot of oil and you pour it in and you watch the oil come all the way to the top and it's full don't stand around full vessels don't stand around and admire all the full vessels because the focus and the attention is on the empty vessels. Before I got saved 
and even since I've been saved, whenever the preacher, the man of God was preaching and it had something to do with me, there were times that I almost felt like I was the only person sitting in that service and God was talking right to me. Because there are times that the focus is not on all the full vessels, but the attention. This vessel's full, set it aside, thank God for you. We're about to use you in a great way to help do some great things. Hold that thought, I got another vessel to fill. And I know when that one's full, I'm gonna set it aside. I'll have another one to fill. Oh, can I tell you this morning of the beauty and the love of God that he loves us this much? Amen. We've come to church and we try to flatter ourselves with singing, flatter ourselves with good preaching, but we forgot. Amen. We're not to get stand around and admire all the full vessels. I read in the word of God where he said, I didn't come for the whole, for they need not a physician. I set them aside, I thank God, and I'm working on another empty vessel. Amen, all God needs is a vessel. I wonder this morning, if you're in a house of God and God is wanting to do a great work in you, come on somebody, it's up to you to take the first step. God's conviction is there, God's spirit is there, but before you'll ever enter into the good things of God, you have got to make a choice. I'm almost done. Stand all across the house if you will. I'm afraid this morning and there are those today that once had their vessel full of God's will and purpose but through their own choosing you chose to pour out what he once poured in I want to say this. We read in the Bible where it said that no man can pluck you out of the hand of God. In other words, there is nobody, there is no thing, but if you by your own choosing and will pour out that that he has poured in by your own choosing, you'll find yourself empty of the things of God. Sister Tracy, will you come play the piano for me this morning? Today could be the day that you allow the long-suffering, merciful hand of the Lord to pour back into you what you should have never allowed to be poured out Maybe, just maybe, maybe, there's one vessel here this morning. You never really felt the fullness of God's oil in your vessel. You sat in a room full of other vessels full, but you don't know what it feels like to have your vessel full. I'm going to tell you this morning, God can turn that around all he's looking for is an empty vessel that's all he wants a vessel that he can do something with he can't mold clay if you can't let if you won't let him he can't do in your life what he desires to do if you're not going to be willing and submit and let him God's trying to bring you out of things he's trying to show you good direction but if you keep pulling away and resisting the hand of God, it's going to be a miserable life for you. His heads are bowed and eyes are closed this morning. I want to ask you, will you be the first one? Will you be the one to step out right now in the name of Jesus and seal it once and for all and make that decision between you and God and say, today, today on my own accord, not because somebody wants it, not because everybody else thinks it, I'm going to step out right now in the name of Jesus and I'm going to get what I need from the Lord. If that's you, come on. I'm not here to embarrass nobody. We're a family here in this church and we're just going to love you. Would you come right now? Is there anybody else that'd be willing to step out?
make you call in an election sure between you and God. Finally, once and for all, put the past behind you. Accept the grace of God. Come on, everyone that will. Saints of God, help us pray for those in need of prayer. Would you come right now in Jesus' name? You don't have to leave lost, bound, afflicted, tormented, but you can leave saved. Come on, church. Saints of God, when you get done praying for someone or for yourself, find somebody else. Lay your hands on and begin to pray for God's will in their life. Come on, would you come right now? Find yourself a place. You got family members right now that are lost. They need God. They need Him. In the name of Jesus, they need Him. Are you willing to let God back into your life? Are you willing to allow God's Spirit to have its way in your life once again? Are you going to keep pushing?